Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Brandon. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brandon Golnick. I'm the administrative assistant for the Board of Selectmen. I work in the town, uh, town manager's office now with Sabrina and Angela. Um, on my second week working for the town of Pembroke, I was introduced to the Veterans Memorial Park. Um, I was asked by a resident to take a look at uh, the Veterans Memorial Park and that the walkways had broken over time. I don't know if it's ever been renovated. Um, you know, the walkways were, were put there and they've become uh, broken over time. Not just due to community use of the park, but also natural causes. So today we're just going to talk about Veterans Memorial Park Project. Um, we've already had a meeting over the Veterans Memorial Park. This is a similar meeting, but we've taken that feedback from the first meeting and we've, t we've t uh, coordinated with Brady Consulting and came up with another uh, render. So this was the old one uh, from the last meeting. And we're going to uh, show you the new one tonight. We're going to talk about ADA accessibility. We're going to talk about the landscape plan uh, done by Brady Consulting. They've also prepared some 3D perspective sketches that I'd like to share with you tonight. Um, and then we're going to talk about the brick fundraiser. And basically what we've done is we've taken all the feedback from the first meeting and we've created a phase one. There were some controversial topics from the last meeting. Uh, some of those topics were the parking, as you guys know. Um, and we've taken those out of the phase one project. Um, and we're only going with the walkways in phase one, um, irrigation and a well just to revitalize the property. So in phase two, which it's not, you know, this is what we also want to get uh, public opinion on, is Curve Street, which we talked about in the first meeting. Um, some of you talked about maybe making it a one-way street. Um, some people talked about closing the street. And, you know, we've also discussed parking on the street. So those are some of the things that we still need to get uh, public opinion about. Curve Street. Um, also, the gazebo, the location of the gazebo was a little bit controversial. In the first meeting, we talked about having it over here. We've just taken it, we've just taken it out of the project for phase one. Um, also, lighting, where to put the lighting, how to light it, that's another uh, area that we took out of phase one, and we're going to talk about it for phase two. Um, the information kiosk, and then parking. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of an introduction about the project. I know a lot of you guys already know about it. Um, the Veterans Memorial Park is located right across the street, Zero Curve Street. Um, inside the Veterans Memorial Park is four monuments, four cannons, two benches, four walkways, and six posts and one flagpole. Um, the components of the park have deteriorated over time and an ADA compliance survey of the park revealed that we need to make ADA improvements in the park. So the plan is to revitalize the Pembroke Veterans Memorial Park by improving ex accessibility for people with a disability, including wheelchair access. Also, right now, the, the memorial monuments, I'll put this so everybody can see, they're basically islands for a person with a disability. According to Title II of ADA, grass is not an ADA compliant surface. So we need to make open recreation access routes in the park for people with a disability, people in a wheelchair. Also, families that have strollers, kids in strollers that want to visit the park. Right now, it's just a bumpy surface, and we'd like to level that surface out. Um, so in this drawing here, you can see the four monuments, but there's no connecting walkways. Also, there's not walkways going around the monument. And according to Title II of ADA, we'd have to have equal access for everybody. Um, and right now, a person in a wheelchair can't get all the way around that monument to view it. Um, we'd also like to put connecting walkways. So a person in a wheelchair can come into the park and stroll through the park and be able to see all of the fruits of the park. Um, 
And as you know, the grass has deteriorated over time, and we'd like to revitalize that grass um, and make it, look, make it look good again. We want to improve public safety by establishing rules and regulations for community use of the park, improve the park appearance by landscaping, including irrigation and a well, um, improve visibility at night by lighting the walkways, memorials, and flags, and improve education by establishing a rich veterans memorial park full of history and knowledge of what our country's battles and our town's soldiers. So I'm going to present to you Andrew Freeman. He's on the Commission on Disabilities. Um, they've helped with this project a lot. He's going to talk to you about the ADA accessibility piece. Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew Freeman. Um, I'm the Commission. So, as, as Brandon had just talked about, um, you know, in our last meeting, we really discussed um, a lot of different things, um, and uh, kind of as a as a group local, you know, we decided to kind of take anything that really needed to be more flushed out with the public and move on to phase two. So anything that has to do with phase two ADA compliance, um, I'm not going to speak on. So really, um, all I'm going to do is give you a little background on ADA compliance, uh, how it started, where we are, where we are with it now, because there's actually a lot happening. Um, at the state and federal level um, with this right now, um, and just how it will be applicable to the park, um, both with ADA compliance and, and general aesthetics. Um, so ADA compliance um, was signed into law in 1990 by George, George uh, Herbert Walker Bush. Um, it's comprised of three major sections, um, titles one, two, and three. Um, the overall scope of the ADA compliance law, which if you're interested, it's, uh, it's under <coughs> federal regulations, it's um, 28 CFR um, parts 35 through 36. Um, the section that we deal with here at the Commission on Disabilities and especially applicable to this park is, set, is Title II, um, which allows people with disabilities to have community access uh, in the best way possible. Um, and Brandon had already touched around on this a little bit um, in his earlier discussion of right now, um, we have a lo lovely Memorial Park, um, but there's three islands um, for devotion towards the Memorial Park. Um, so as far as accessibility goes, and like I said, grass is, um, is, is a challenge if you've ever had crutches or um, or have ever had to be, be in a wheelchair for an extended period of time, that's a challenge um, for, for us. Um, so like I said, that's really the section we're dealing with. Um, and actually, as of recently, these were revamped. Um, all three titles were revamped in 2010 um, to um, accommodate anything, um, any changes, um, allow more flexibility for state and local governments like ourselves. Um, and, and the people um, of the com, uh, you know, in, the, in this particular case, the Commonwealth, to uh, really use these to the best of their ability. Um, so that revamp was done and started in 2010. Um, the Title II section was the last section done um, on this project, and that was completed in January of 2016. So. Um, what we're looking at as far as ADA compliance in phase one, um, this is Brandon had said, um, uh, stepping away from the parking and, and then everything else, is basically to add connective tissue throughout the park um, for people, um, as I mentioned, with those uh, handicaps. Um, and really for anyone, um, one of the great pieces in the Title II compliance um, is to create um, long-lasting, um, you know, durable and flat surfaces um, to tra traverse from start to finish. Um, this is, I want to step back for just two seconds. This is uh, terribly applicable um, now. In the state of Massachusetts, um, they're taking their own initiative um, with the Title II ADA compliance in the last five years. Um, with, with what they call the ABI program, um, which is anyone with an acquired brain injury. Um, they actually started it um, with joint um, veterans um, services in the state at the federal, uh, at the state level for the Commonwealth. So to properly accommodate 
um, for exactly this, for veterans um, and any needs that they might have. Um, so this is something that's going on, uh, particularly in the Commonwealth um, at this moment. Um, they want to provide the best um, and most compliant situation they can. Um, so all we're doing, as, as, uh, as I've said, is just add connective tissue across, uh, going left to right, um, to connect the four monuments. And beyond that, um, just be able to um, allow them to exit the park as well, um, to a safe manner. Now, where they park their cars is something we will work on in phase two, um, in a more of a discussion manner. Um, but to, to re-brick this um, and to allow, allow it to be a surface that can be easily tra traversed, again, not to just for, and I had said this to, uh, I see some familiar faces from the last meeting, uh, you know, this is just uh, the resurfacing, it will meet ADA compliance, um, but I truly believe, um, you know, when I moved into Pembroke, there was one, there was one uh, traffic light here. Um, and and for, for us to be able to safe, for anyone to safely traverse um, across that park, I think will be fantastic. The only other thing that Brandon added was the lighting. Um, and that, again, just allows the general safety of the general public of the town um, to really succeed and enjoy their memorial park and as uh, in this particular project to properly um, promote our veterans and their well-being. So that's all for me. I'm going to turn it back over to Brandon. Thanks, guys. And I also want to add, this This is part, is part of an, an initiative in town to bring the entire town to ADA compliance. Uh, when, I, when I first started working here, I worked with Wesson and Samson to do a transition plan for the entire town, um, directed by the Board of Selectmen and uh, Mr. Edwin Thorne, the town manager. Uh, and we went through the entire town, we looked at six buildings and six parks, um, and we came up with a plan to bring everything uh, to, to compliance with the ADA. Um, so now I'm going to show you real quick. This is what we had in the last meeting. And what we've done is we've worked with Brady Consulting and we've taken off the parking piece. This piece right here is phase one. All it is is you, you know the walkways, the connecting walkways, exits and entrances into the park, um, and then you know the walkways around each memorial monument and irrigation and a well. Also the planting of flowers. Um, and that's kind of the landscape plan here, where you can see flowers planted around each memorial monument. And here is a 3D perspective sketch. This is what we expect it to look like when it's done. Um, So as you can see here, these are walls going around, and there's actually going to be seating here for people to sit down. And this is a view from inside the gazebo, which we're not completely sure that the gazebo is going to go here yet, but if it did, that's what it was looking like from that angle. <laughs> You can see how the park will interact with the church, which I know a lot of you are here from the church because it directly abuts the church. Um, and I wanted to provide you with this sketch to show you how that interaction. So, you know, you can see if, if the park is graded, it'll be flat, and you'll have a walkway leading directly to the church parking lot here. This walkway over here is, is broken. And you know, we, we intend on removing that walkway and then replacing it with a new walkway. And then you see these two new walkways here, one leading to Center Street on the sidewalk and another which uh, Andy Congrats and uh, the American Legion and the Memorial Committee did with the Biobrick fundraiser. And we're trying to bring that Biobrick fundraiser back to life um, for this project. 
The walkway to the World War I memorial, which is nearest the church. Yes. That's the walkway that the church thought was most important because we're landing our new ADA ramp on that walkway so that we can walk directly over to the sewing circle directly across the street from that. Yeah. That walkway you've eliminated and haven't mentioned it. So those two walkways right now are completely broken. Um, I'll go back to the... So we're talking about... Who are responsible for the walkways that are broken? Uh, these walkways are broken due to, you know, no, natural who's causes. Who's supposed to fix them? Hmm? Who's supposed to fix yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Well, right now, because there was a piece that was sitting up for a while. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're addressing right now. So, um, you know, because my husband fixed them. <laughs> oh, really? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the town. Who maintains this? Right. Uh, the town of Pembroke maintains it. Um, Which you know. is who's maintaining it? Not am. That's yes. what I'm asking. So, you know. It's in the rotation of DBW. There you go. Good answer. Okay, okay. but no, I'm not crazy. trying to be, but that walk okay. that piece of block mm -hmm. yes. was out there for a while. Mm -hmm. has, has anyone um, taken care of the final cost on this to the town? On an ongoing basis, lighting, maintenance, water. Yes, there is several projects in the town that need to be addressed. Um, we're trying to only work with the current CPC funding that we have, and then use fundraisers and other donations to fund this project, so we don't take money away so, from higher priority. But with a well, so with a well lender, you eliminate the water costs. You'll have recurring okay. lighting costs, and you'll have maintenance okay, costs. Okay, but are you and lighting it's isn't all even CPA in this case. money. CPC money. Maintenance CPC. would be. Well, maintenance would continue to be done by the DPW, and that wouldn't require any additional funding. That is part of the rotation, but again, due to its current condition, and you know that this sounds counterintuitive, but it's more difficult to maintain, and it's more difficult to bring back to some kind of really good-looking appearance. So it's easier to cut the grass and move on to places where you can just, your labor shows. And by putting in some investment and actually bringing it to an easily maintainable grade with irrigation, have that grass be green again, the maintenance on that is actually less than the maintenance that's over there now. And to your point, that happened. walkway was a, was a disaster. Right, and, and that, that, that walkway was over two months, that piece of, was there. So if there was rotation, why wasn't it just shifted in? It's an excellent question. Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> because the DPW didn't get to it so, on know, the rotations. Since, since 19, I guess we can just use a mark, like 1950, our population was around 2,500 people, and we're nearing 20,000 people today. We're not quite there. And we're not going to get there. We're going to stay at 1930 for a long time. But, you know, our population has increased so much mm -hmm. that we'd really like to revitalize downtown. You know, there's several projects that other people are working on, um, like the community center project, and that's an attempt to also revitalize downtown. And this is a key ingredient to the downtown revitalization. I don't know if you guys have seen the GAR hall. Um, that's, a, that's another attempt to revitalize downtown. Um, the Pembroke community has grown, and it's a beautiful community. And we want to make downtown, you know, Mimic that beautiful community. Yes. Oh, this is pretty. Has fundraising begun? Yes. Yeah, fundraising began last week. Um, we've we're nearing one thousand dollars so far. And what's the, the total? That what's the total goal? We'd like to sell five thousand bricks. You know, this is a community how, project. How much per brick? Fifty dollars. Okay. Yep. It's fifty dollars per brick. Um, you know, we have it advertised online right now, but, you know, we put it into the newspapers. Um, and this is a chance, and you're, you know, for everybody in Pembroke to be involved in this project. And also, you can put your name on the brick, or a relative's name on a brick, um, someone who served in the military on a brick, and put it into the park. Um, I think it's a beautiful day. I just want to add one thing, too. Um, for those who haven't heard of the program yet, um, the way we are kind of marketing um, this buy a big brick uh, program, uh, the two pushes um, advertisement wise will be centered around our veterans. So you'll be see, I think uh, our first um, real phase out of, of the advertisement of it will come this coming weekend with Memorial Day. 
Um, and then I think the next one is scheduled for, um, I think we did July 4th, correct? Yeah, around, yeah, yeah. around July 4th. July. Um, so we're trying to use those two centers, um, you know, because again, this, this project is based around our veterans, um, to center this fundraiser right around those times. Yep. Do you have to have X amount of bricks before you put them in? Yeah, I think we want to complete, yeah. complete the process. So um, how many bricks is that? We're, we're hoping to put the bricks in this fall. I know, but I do things at the high school and we, we are selling bricks also. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you <laughs> to explain. There's X amount of bricks that we have to sell before we can put them in. That's so what I'm asking. We need, we need about, to make this entire project come to life, we need about 15,000 bricks. Um, but, I, I did reach out. What was that? Okay. But I know, but I'm asking like the first phase, do you have that 15 bricks before you put them in? Or do you need the 1,500 or years? Well, oh. there's no, you know, there's, we really don't have a cap on the amount of bricks that we need to move forward. So I think, I think, I think, so so you put the bricks down, down, you can put them all down at once, or you can do it sections at a time? Yes, we're going to put them all down at once. Right. Okay. So, but not all the bricks will be, have names, names on them. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've got, this is a, a much different version of this because we pulled back from the phase two pieces, right? Yes. And so with this phase one, which is kind of a bare bones, more of a bare bones approach than you had in the first uh, the first drawings that we saw. Right? It's not the first as interactive. It's like the overall, like you know, we wanted to get public <clears throat> opinion on it. So you you you're not going to address those parking issues that you have so, at either end there, right? In this not first until phase two. Not until phase two. But public and, comment is absolutely welcome. I think he wanted to get through the bricks yeah. before he got to the road. No, that's right. Um, I, no. So I'm um, just trying to get an idea of the, of the phases and the timeline yeah. for that. What is the so, timeline? Well, mm. let me ask the question. So um, well, the other issue that. is, you're, you're, I'm assuming with this phase one, that you're not going to be adding any curbing along Curb Street? Nope. Okay. So, so that the parking for the church today, which is rel about 15 cars that park up and down there on a, on a given Sunday when we have events, would yes, still be available to us. Yes, sir. The way it is now. Um, and then the next question is site plan review. Um, has an application been made for site plan review from the planning board for this? We haven't moved forward with that yet because I wanted to give the public another opportunity to take a look at the work. Okay. So then I can craft a scope of work that everybody agrees with. Okay. You know, right now, we haven't made it to that point. Okay. Well, that's usually, that, the site plan <laughs> review that. usually solidifies some stuff and it would give us a really good idea, you know, what actually was going to be built. Yeah. And when, and time. So the timeline, so you, you also got some money at town meeting for this, right? Did you receive money? No. No. CPA no. no. money. No. Okay. No, there was some engineering money that was paid to okay. do some of this work to actually get grade and get everything you need for a proper site plan review. And then some of these um, illustrations. Yeah. To, to be able to show to people and what phases worked well with everyone's, I don't want to say support or consensus, but what was appropriate to go forward. Okay. So, rather than later. so I know from the church's perspective, a couple of concerns we want to talk about. One is the easement and the view of the church, that 100-foot easement through the center where the flagpole is. And I, I see some n nicely rendered um, elevations there for, for that treatment. Um, and, of course, you know, the, the elephant in the room for me is the fair, the ongoing um, sighting of the fair for yep. First Church which we've been using on that site for more than 70 years. So those are, those are kind of two issues that I have concerns with. And then getting to that phase two and those parking issues, I mean, if we can address the parking overall, because we do have, we have robust programs at the church. There's people there every single day, you know, with a, with a, a preschool going there and with the programs that we have going on an ongoing basis. We've got a lot of activity in and out of there. Absolutely. Um, not just church activity. You know, yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Community in general. So we want to make sure that we, we, you know, we've got that egress to the site and, you know. And oh, absolutely. All the ADA yeah. issues, of course, are really important. So we want to make sure that we're kind of work with you guys with that too. Yeah, we we look forward <coughs> to partnering with the First Church for this project. Um, You're going to reap the most direct benefit. 
Yeah. As long as it's something that we can have a fair. As long as we can have our largest fundraiser that supports our church and our tradition. Did you notice that phase two was sort of lopped off at this point for this very purpose? I did, but like Andy said, there's an elephant in the room. You know, the parking was premature. We have to, you know, work out those kinks, figure out what is going to be the most beneficial for First Church and the Veterans Memorial Park. We don't want to make anybody upset. We want the best possible solution. <laughs> Agreed. From Not your conversation, I assume oh, yes. that you expect that this is going to go through. It's going to pass. I mean, does it have to be voted on by people? Um, it's, it's, the whole plan looks as if it's a done deal, is what I'm saying. So... That we're definitely going to do something yes, major we, with it. We 100% need to improve the grounds, and we 100% need to comply with ADA. ADA is non negotiable. Yep. Um, I imagine this was addressed months and months ago, but I'm going to ask it. <laughs> um, when, when this land was gifted to the town, has, and I don't even know what year it was. Did someone? What? Did someone? Did, has it already been researched that that there are no barriers to this going forward? So <laughs> there was, there's no, there are no stipulations that it, yeah, it there, has to be there used are, for this, there, or it has to be used for that. Has that already been? Is it 1918? 1908. 1908. That's it. That's a use question, and you know those questions. I'm going to have to direct the town manager, Mr. Edwin Thorne. And yes, he does have someone looking into it to get some more clarity and clarification. Okay. But the thing that Brandon's trying to say, and he's doing a really fine job of saying it, we had to go out and do an ADA self-assessment, and we had to go on record as voting that document. We had to perform an assessment of all of our facilities. We didn't have a choice. It is something that nowadays for very good reasons and robust reasons. You heard some of this from Andrew, but you may not have filtered it through the Pembroke town lens, right? People now have an ability to mm. file non-compliance charges to the tune of very large amounts of money if the town refuses or denies or will not address their issues. So an assessment was done, mm -hmm. consensus was achieved on what is appropriate and not appropriate with doorknobs and different functionalities, entryways, slopes, grades, inches for accessibility. Um, having said that, there are some parcels that get heavier traffic than others and were reprioritized because they see a lot of folks at any given time. Now, to your point, when this was just the Veterans Memorial Park with no large fundraiser annually, it didn't have a whole lot of foot traffic on it at any given time. But there's an exposure to the town when we continuously say, yeah, we know it's not compliant and we're not going to address it. So this is a natural and normal step by phasing it back to, or scaling it back to a phase one, it doesn't touch the parking lots, yeah. it doesn't touch the curbing, it doesn't technically touch the phase. But you have to get that ADA But we compliance. must That's proceed so right. with something that, quite frankly, is very attractive. It's an improvement to your, the front yard of the church. And of course, your feedback's vital. It wouldn't work without you. This has to be consensus building. But that's the approach and the, and the the vantage point he's coming from. Go ahead, Alan. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I clearly understand the ADA accessibility. And accessibility is about slopes and grades and conditions of walkways. It is not about walls or flower beds being constructed in the part of the property that by deed restriction and easement, when the church gave the property to the town in 1908, that deed very clearly says the only structure that should be in there is a flagpole. Now, I don't know how the other monuments wound up around the flagpole, <laughs> how the uh, IBEW uh, solar panel with the battery box that doesn't light the, the flag up, so the church put its own light up to light the flag. Yes, so, so we do need to partner with each other. Absolutely. We need to clearly understand that walls around that center flagpole may not be in the best interest of the church. Okay. And, and uh, while flowers are beautiful, I'm hard pressed to believe that flower beds are less expensive to maintain than green grass. So, and bricks, while they're great for raising funds, they also uh, many towns have had brick walkways in the center of the town to look quaint 
in many towns, five or ten years after the brick walkways went in, tore them out and put in cement because it's longer and easier to maintain. Which, uh, ADA accessibility over bricks, I would be challenged to say that's a better accessibility than a concrete walkway, but I clearly understand it's a great mechanism to raise funds. And uh, I'm, I'm done with my question is, we asked about having the walkway maintained from the World War I Memorial, it's not maintained, so I don't feel we were heard. And we raised the point that we do have an easement and a deed restriction. The town owns a deed restriction around the flagpole for just a flagpole to be there. And we've had no conversation about doing anything different. So I don't feel that the church's interest in property that the deed restriction says was to be maintained for the uh, pleasure and recreation of the church and the inhabitants of the town. So I just want to be clear that we do need to have a dialogue, and it doesn't need to be a big public forum, but we haven't been involved in a dialogue until we see a well-rendered plan that represents a fairly significant investment of design time and dollars, and it's unfortunate that we didn't have a sit-down about what made more sense to the church. I have a feeling that we're building a, what they used to call nail stew. You know, you put the hobo said you put the rusty nail in and you're gonna have a wonderful stew. But you know, if you put a potato in, it'll be a little better. You know, if you had a little piece of meat, it would be a little better. So phase one, phase two, phase three, by the time we're done with this, we may have something that is not in the best interest of the church, but it came along slowly and we were forced fed it. And Amen. I don't like that feeling, but I want to be clear that that's the feeling I'm getting is happening and in a public forum, I want to mention it and get it on the tape. Right. So I would just Thank like you. to say that this town is comprised of a lot more than just, and I and I absolutely agree that it just needs to be an open discussion and, and what the church thinks is very important. But the town is compromised of much more than just the population of the church. We have a lot more people in the town than we have in the church. And this is by far, and a, and a way, what we need in the center of town. And Brandon has been and has been absolutely stellar in what he's done to and what he's achieved in these photographs and these renderings. I think we should all be thrilled that we're going to have such a, a, a draw and a beautiful thing in the center of our town. And you know, um, I don't think it's going to take away from the church at all. I think people should be aware too that the church has. Um, a permit in for a new sign because the sign that they have now is stuck way behind everything and not visible. Perhaps yeah. that could be worked into the phase one. A yeah, better great. sign for the church so there would be some give and take there to help yeah. the church out as well. Where is the church? Where's the location? Where's the optimal location for the sign? Uh, out yeah, by the road. It's it's no, road. I'm just saying, like by yeah, the corner right. or just straight out in the front? Closer to the front. Yeah, we got to work on sight lines and everything else. Yes. Yeah, but I know. First, I know. Of course. <clears throat> of course, I don't disagree with that. Either. Mm -hmm. Your question, you're talking about ADA. The sidewalk is on the opposite side of Center Street. Yeah. Has anything been done about the pedestrian might being put in there? Mm. If you're going to have people crossing the streets and traffic, that's a dead zone. I'm surprised to Nobody stopped. No, they don't. Is That's something that we'll definitely address. Yeah. Is there, take a look into and a, put a little bit more thought into it. It's a crosswalk. It's a crosswalk, right? Yeah. 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 But there's no flashing no. sign. There's no. I've been in the crosswalk. And they used understand. to be. They used to be a flashing sign. What? what how many years ago? <laughs> that was <laughs> the question. Thank you, Lee. This is a question for Andy. How can is the Andy, listen to Stephanie. Uh, the gazebo is going to be accessible through a ramp. Um, I don't know if Brendan has any photos of the well, outside of it, but what we're thinking is it'll be a grade essentially. <laughs> yeah, the, the entrance of the gazebo will be at grade with the walkway. If this is the selected location for the gazebo, um, and then on the other side of the gazebo here, uh, you'll see some stairs going down into the park, and then also you know, this was from the first meeting. 
Um, I know that this parking was a controversial piece. We still need to put a lot more thought and detail and analysis into this parking lot here. But we did have it, you know, a walkway leading off of the gazebo at level surface and then go into a parking area here. But you know, we we haven't worked those things out yet. Yeah, that'll be. But yeah, it'll be a it'll be a basic ADA grade, which um, is for X amount of feet. You have to have X amount of inches in grade um, increase um, uh, for safety. Um, and also, that's why I've, I've got everybody to um, to re regard the question. Um, mostly, the cases are uh, around the bricks unleveling themselves. Um, I, I do sympathize that I actually just made myself and my my own patio and then it unlevels all the time. <laughs> Normally what happens when an ADA compliant, when uh, a, a constructor knows it is an ADA compliant um, system, there is a, a underground, a lower level piece essentially under the bricks that they can lay to, to stabilize that, that piece. So I just wanted to address that yeah. for concerns too, because that's obviously a concern when you're working with ADA. Yes, sir. Stephen Michael Palmer, a frequent visitor to the church. I heard about the uh, town meeting member myself. I was wondering, uh, does this first has to go to the town meeting for approval? Who has decided the local so government? So basically, we've conducted a self-evaluation and transition plan with Wesson and Samson for ADA compliance. And that transition plan was voted on and approved by the Board of Selectmen to make ADA improvements in the town. Any improvements are necessary at this particular park because we are not in compliance, the walkways are broken, the level of, uh, the, it's public it's public property, um, which means the, you know, the town of Pembroke is responsible for making this parcel of land ADA compliant. If we don't, then we're at risk of not only, you know, not providing equal opportunity for people with disabilities, but also uh, extensive fines that could be passed on you know, from the state. What are the other uh, non-compliant areas in the town of Pembroke? Other non-compliant areas in the town of Pembroke include, do you want me to go through the entire list? Okay. Ironically, <laughs> no. that entire PowerPoint is on this particular drive. If you really want okay. to okay. switch gears well, right and go through. to the uh, compliance. This project, okay. So, you know, just, just to give you an overview of ADA compliance in the town. We have six buildings and six parks that are not compliant. We'll start right here at Town Hall. Um, town Hall requires ADA improvements. Um, you know, the library has small improvements that need to be done, the senior center, um, the police department, the fire department, uh, Town Landing, which we're doing a project right now. It's going to be another really beautiful project that, you know, we're, we're working really hard on um, is making Town Landing ADA compliant. This year, we're rolling out the ADA compliant mats, then leading from the entrance to the play area, another perpendicular from that, leading to the water. Um, we intend on demolishing the current guard house and constructing a new ADA compliant guard house. Um, I'm writing a proposal right now to the Massachusetts Office on Disability um, to, for the town landing project, which we approximate to be around $125,000. Um, so that proposal will be written for its we have a draft proposal right now. It's due in October. Um, the other parks include Stetson, um, Stetson Beach, uh, Little Sandy, these improvements, Ludham's Ford, Herring Run Park, and there's one more. Tubbs Meadow. <laughs> and you know, what we've done is we've built, with the help of Andrew, a Commission on Disabilities. We have a full functioning Commission on Disabilities for the first time in a very long time. People that actively advocate and assist and help and prepare and address ADA compliant issues in our town. And we take great pride in that. I'm the town's ADA coordinator, as well as uh, Mr. Thorne named me the ADA coordinator in September of last year. And we've created a five year and a tentative 10 year plan to bring the entire town to compliance with ADA. Um, and so we are spend the our, Veterans Memorials by the middle school and the Herring Run, are those already ADA compliant? I have not reviewed those. No, you, you just the Shepherds, you haven't looked at that one. Yeah, I haven't looked at the Shepherds yet. 
but as far as Henry Park, we're in the process of making the ADA improvements now. Um, a plan that has actually already been drafted by Wesson and Samson. We're gonna. Uh, it's going out to bid. Yeah, it's going out to bid. The first part is to make the bridge ADA compliant, and that's gonna serve as the basis for the rest of the ADA compliance in the park, including open recreation access routes throughout, so a person with a disability can get from one park to the other side, because right now they can't. You know, the slopes are too steep. Um, and again, ADA says that uh, just like a grass surface or a dirt surface is not considered an open recreation access route. Did that answer your question? Just one more for, to answer that question is that the, um, the project will go through site plan review also with the planning board. So there's a lot a many levels of approvals and scrutiny. So yeah, just kind of all of a sudden I heard about it and it's like Wait a minute, there's got to be some uh, other avenues here before it's uh, yeah. done. You know, people are worried that it's going to uh, just come about. Just. Hi, Brandon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know me so well, you just look right through me. Um, considering, I, I, I credit Brandon with it's, it's pulling it all together. So, it's a huge it's a partnership but between and, No, but, and, but, and, okay. if you know me, I don't but, I and. <laughs> and if you were now going to another consideration after tonight's meeting and hearing people's concerned, uh, concerns, so I would like you to hear my concern. Okay. Would you consider having the fair and its components three days a year um, heavy rides are placed. Where could they get placed? Could you help us figure out how to utilize somewhere in this space using the paved part, using the curve street part? Yeah. Perhaps, I, I do love grass, but perhaps there might be a landing pad for a tilt the whirl at, at one end of the triangle or something. Could you and the designers consider how would this be used, especially those three days? That would be something new yep. for us to hear. I would I would guess that 90% of us who are here are members of First Church. Yep. Tell me what you're doing Tuesday morning. And will you will somebody meet with our moderator or somebody from First Church to see how can we peacefully coexist? So or, on or Tuesday. Be, or be, or be good stewards of of, uh, <laughs> of the park. So on Tuesday, I'm gonna be walking around with uh, Yellow Sims and uh, Ziggy. And I want to see how the fair is set up. I need the knowledge. I've never, you know, I was here last year, but I, I had just gotten here. So I need the knowledge. I need to see. And you're gonna get an opportunity to meet with Larry Cushing. Um, what was that? You're going to get to meet with Larry Cushing. Yep. You're going to get to talk to the guy who does places. And I'd like to sit down with members of the church in a room and get that down on paper so that I can bring that to Grady Consulting and incorporate that into the plan and see what we can do. So the and church like was, should pick its people and know who you want to bring. We basically need a spokesman from the church. A couple, if you, know, if you choose a couple. Pick a delegation. And we can vote sit it. down and we can constantly be in communication with this project so that it... You know, the best possible outcome is is it is what unfolds. That's really Why good to hear. Why was that not done at the beginning? Thank you. You're welcome. Why was that not done at the beginning? It was, it was premature. I started an analysis. It got yeah, well. This is about the groups that were up there. Well, yes, but Brett, you might want to remind this gentleman that you were reaching out to an interim person and a previous moderator. It yes, was so not necessarily I successful. Out to the church and but I today it looks good. I mean, at least dozens of times. I have emailed First Church many, many times, and I never get a response. Finally, I got a response from the intern pastor there, and we sat down in a room with Mr. Thorne, and we discussed it. We discussed this project with them. And at the time, it turned out not to be the correct group of folks. So it would be great if you put together the correct group of folks so it goes forward better. Here we are. I think these people need to know that, like Brainerd said, it's only been here a year. This was the first project we stepped into. Um, and that's, it's, a, it's a hefty project. We had no idea about the fair. And, and we have watched him through this process. He is doing the best he can 
and we'll continue to do the best we can to make sure every side is satisfied by the time this is done. He's, he's an honorable guy, and he doesn't want to insult anybody. He doesn't want to completely give it a fair, and I think we have to trust that he, we have to put some trust in him, and he will do everything he can to make sure everybody is satisfied at the end of this day. He brings a lot of direct and linear process to this table. Yeah. Well, There's a lot really of conversation. Right. You. We are very thankful for you. Yeah, I appreciate Go ahead. it. Thank you. Yes, sir. The parking lot that's to the left, I'm assuming that is the first church parking lot. Yes. It's in the rear. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the left of that it's photo. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have a... No, that's right. The picture you were on. Yeah, you're right. Original picture. No. No. Nope. No, no, more. No, no, Back no, to the no, one no, you were on. Just Back. Correct. Yeah, yeah. To, to the room. left of the photo, but to the rear of the diagram. Yeah, okay. No. Is the church the parking lot? Bring this picture the to the left. <laughs> left. 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 Correct. Yep. Down. 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 What, the parking lot? No, yes. we only own the building. No, we own some of the parking lot. We own half of the walks that are on that. Right. The, uh, the uh, line on the, on the drawing he has right there, you can see that the walk coming off the beautiful center flagpole piece mm -hmm. seems very short. In reality, that will be twice as long to get across the green space to the existing parking lot. So half of the bricks or walkway between the church parking lot and the flagpole centerpiece with the uh, uh, service memorials on it would, would be church property. Part of the agreement in the 1908 was that the town would maintain the entire piece uh, because it was more convenient. Uh, and I'm thrilled that that has been honored. And a good example of that was just had, I asked about uh, getting a... Uh, a discount or a, a deal for some uh, repair materials so we can have a contractor repair our parking lot for the, mem the memorial events that will be taking place on Monday and uh, more than an olive branch was extended we'll pay for some of the repair materials and DPW spent several hours with a huge crew there this morning and we have now have a very safe parking lot and I wish to thank uh, the town for that that was a huge effort you know, they had some big machinery and some very skilled people there. Did a great job. Well, all you have to all you have to do is ask. And now that we have a dialogue going, I'm a lot more confident that um, uh, the concerns that are being raised will be addressed. And for your information, um, Larry Cushing is the owner of the amusement company. Um, that, and we'll be meeting with him on Tuesday when he gets there. Um, his background is in parks. He does them everywhere. Oh. However, one of his um, grandparents was involved in that as a career, and the other one amusement. So that has bonded in his life. He's extremely careful, um, as some of the conventions could, um, that met with him. He's been <laughs> with us a couple of years, but he's very That's into that. So you'll you'll take away a lot of information from him as well. Yeah, um, I have. Here. So he's very, and very easy to talk to. I have heard that there's been a lot of improvement with the new company that you're using. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The flag, of course, is important. Yes. What are you doing about the service flags? Are they going to be flying? We're going to have five more poles up there. We're hoping to have more flag poles up there. Um, you know, in the last meeting, we talked about putting all the flags up right there. But, you know, that's another thing that we need to address and get more public opinion on. Where to put them, the location, how big they'll be. Um, the diversions pack, we'd like to see our flag money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. I'd <laughs> 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 um, We have a preschool that's there five days a week. Hmm? We have meetings in the evenings. We have activities on the weekends. Hmm? Have you addressed any form of security for that area? 
Security is a huge issue, and we are analyzing that. Um, you know, we've conducted an entire analysis and report, and that report is still being structured and more content's being put into it. Um, but yes, we've definitely looked at security. Um, I'm just looking at the scale of that large circle with the flashbulb. What's the diameter of that when it's done? Um, I'm not 100% sure what the, the diameter of that is. Um, that's a good question. And there's currently. benches around it now. We thought it'd be nice for people to have a place to sit. To, read, to look at the memorials, that you know, people come there, have a picnic with their children or families, um, and it's a good place to, to be seated there in front of the American flag. If you get enough coverage, picnicking, yeah. are you going to have rest areas, restrooms? No. How do you handle that? Right. And trash pickup. Those are all very, very good questions. Yeah. You know, we're not expecting, you know, to have picnics every day there. Um, but you never know if it, you know, it's just beautiful when it's done and people want to have a picnic there. You know, of course, we're going to have to put a, a trash can in that fits the aesthetic of the park. We'd also like to put an information kiosk to um, address the history of the park. It's kind of like a park. Way down the road. I'm just going to give people permission if they decide, oh, I want to have a wedding on the green. Do they have to have some... We already, we already jumped through a lot of hoops just to coordinate the use of that space, and it's coordinated through the town manager's office with the church well, and the and town memorial committee. Be part of that? Because well, you always I can see been. someone doing something big in the middle of... One of our ways well, up until now, up until people. now, it's been coordinated. Unless a pop up comes out of the church, and okay. no one from town has ever said a word about a pop up that comes out of the church. It's out of respect. It's understood. Uh, but if the town were going to have someone approach them for a wedding or some other extreme event that has not happened in nine years, by the way, um, the first thing we would do is coordinate with the memorial committee and with the church. That's how it's always been well, done. I'm, well, I'm just thinking if someone if. Whoever You're right. If it looks this beautiful town, and potentially has a gazebo, we, we could in fact wedding, have that we issue. Need to know that as well. To be Correct. Sure. Yes. Okay. okay. Correct. Yeah. Um, the folks from I'm trying to think of her name. You had a couple of the oh, treasures uh, of the heart or yeah. 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 There, I mean, yeah. and just small little events oh, that clearly were fine. They were lovely. No, 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 not no, about tent. No, 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 like little, <laughs> y not yard sale, but little things that oh, would pop yeah, out onto the lawn. Oh, all right. It's a pop-up store. Right. Right. Pop -up they, a pop-up. They they're just, they're there, there and they're gone, and, and yeah. it's charming, okay. and it's charming. If anyone fell down and sued, we'd be yeah, surprised, but um, <laughs> to that event, we, you know, some things do migrate out onto the lawn. And for example, if you look at this, the preschool kids would have an, a lovely time on that, wouldn't they? That's very structured. It's very clean. It's very funny. Part of the deal. I was going to say. Did you talk about um, the overall cost of this one project? The overall cost of, you know, so over the ten years. How does this break down? Basically, what we need to do is we need another public forum. We need to, we need to coordinate with First Church, get all of the kings out, figure out what we want to do in Phase One. I'm going to draft a scope of work, and you know, like he was saying, we need site plan review. And then we can do RFQs and figure out what the cost will be. Um, and if it exceeds what we have, then you know I also write grants for the town. It's under my job description, and you know I'll. I'll he signed it. I'll He'll find figure, it. I'll figure out a way. <laughs> but again, I think everybody has to be somewhat satisfied. It has to be more than a goal or a dream or a rendering. It has to become something that there's buy-in and there's consensus and that there's a real desire to achieve. No one wants to work against anyone here. Can, can I hear, I heard about a deed restriction um, from Alan. What is, your, what is your perspective on that deed restriction? The, what, the is, what does that mean to you? Like, the easement? I, yeah, no, no. Okay. There's two things. Okay. Which one are we talking about? 
There's a deed restriction, yeah. and then there's an easement. easement. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, can, can you, I'd like to hear the point of view of the town on that. Oh, I wouldn't give you the point of view of the town. I'm only one person. She's only supreme. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's like, is it? So, Absolutely. Yeah, so this is a very, no, and again, when I said earlier that he was still getting feedback from council on exactly what was appropriate, what was not appropriate, okay. what could he bring to a table to build consensus with, what should he not? Okay. Those are some of those finer points. But this feedback is what we're here to gain and to learn what the concerns are. Do you have any pictures of phase two or when it's going to do that? Well, this public forum is going to craft they don't know. phase two. This is the start of know. us discussing phase two and then also trying to work on the things. Um, you know, we need to have a, a, a sit down, multiple sit downs, and figure out phase one first. Um, you know. If it was a perfect world, what would phase two be? Yeah. So, so, they're curious. I was going to say, how can you stop, finish one phase of something coming up in two and three just, and the, that and the first, a, a change to phase one or waste of money? In the, first, uh, in the first meeting we had here, we discussed the total project. Um, so if you were here during that time, then you saw the entire project. But also, if you go to the website, you'll see the entire project, which you know, is, is basically nothing more than what you see here. We need parking, we need walkways, we need lighting. Um, you know, I almost think that these two phases here would finish the project. I don't think that we'll need a phase three or a phase four. Um, in total, uh, you know, phase two, which is, you know, why we're here tonight, um, would be dealing with uh, Curve Street, um, dealing with the gazebo, dealing with lighting, information kiosk, parking, more flags. Um, but yeah, we're not planning on, you know, building a, a building <laughs> or anything like that, or a skyscraper, just, just an entrance to more of a park. Brandon, the ADA rules clearly state that the accessibility to the main attraction has to be within 200 feet of parking. I don't think that's changed since I was very adept at the rules in 99. Uh, so if the gazebo exists, I think people would consider that the main attraction to the park. And if your parking is more than 200 feet away from that, that needs to be considered. So the point that was made earlier about having an end result of what your final picture looks like, your parking and your grades and your slopes to get from the main event to the parking, and I realize that you're looking at grading, which may require some sort of a retaining wall of the Oldham Street curve, because that's where it drops off. I was thinking the same thing. But the Oldham Street side is where the traffic is the slowest, albeit there are some people that come off the center street and race down there. But that's a sharp enough turn that they gotta get slow enough they're not gonna kill you when they get in, just hurt your back. <laughs> but that, you may want to look at that little triangle there in front of the Walsh uh, yeah, I agree. House as, as something that may have some uh, more utilization. Mm -hmm. The parking across the street uh, for the Hatch Building and the uh, historical building, that is stuff that you can use and there is a crosswalk there. So you are doing a lot of good things thinking about this. Um, so I, I'm encouraged and I'm hopeful that uh, you'll really consider whether or not a, 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 the gazebo is an appropriate structure to put there. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, that's it was a controversial topic. We decided to take it out and discuss it again tonight. And um, you know, I'd like to set up a meeting with you and any other in, uh, interested parties from the church and sit down and get stuff down on paper. Um, and you know, we can set up that meeting tonight. We can set it up next week. Um, <laughs> Brandon, I just want to jump in real quick too. Just in, in regards to ADA compliance and the main attraction, um, in the 2010 restructs, they did uh, the, the, the thing they did change on this was if there is, is basically whatever we label in our, our plans and the self assessments that Brandon did, whatever they kind of construct around, that becomes the main attraction. So if we added a gazebo that wouldn't technically, under under that section, it wouldn't technically be um, a main attraction because it's an added, that we call it an added supplemental um, 
it's a very flowery term for it. Uh, excuse me for not remembering. Yeah, nuisance. Yeah, um, but the gazebo <laughs> would act as that. Yeah. Basically, yeah. basically, the um, whatever we're we're talking of of, of rebuilding um, becomes the main the main attraction. Yeah, I'd just like to say that this is, after all, the Memorial Park, and the memorials are the center of attraction. The gazebo is secondary. I think that's why we're leaving it out. And we can add that in at, a, at another point where we all agree. But the memorials are the centerpiece. Of the flag and that center monument. Um, well center. That's a good point. Well Brendan, can I also raise the issue that when you were talking about speeding and all that kind of stuff, People are going around Curve Street at a huge amount of speed. I don't know what you can do to kind of temper that somehow, but you know, that's a serious issue for us. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon, I'm curious too. <laughs> so I have had some input with, with Brandon. I will continue to work on the public safety aspect. I, I want you to realize while this fair is going on forever and the church has been and the memorial's been there forever. Our population has only increased, the cars have only increased, and I think even Brandon was pretty surprised at the traffic study that showed 12,000 cars a day go by that location. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to have a, a flashing crosswalk sign, you know, parking across the street is kind of scary, even me. You know, I'm not as nimble as I used to be. And um, <laughs> getting across the street, not always a good deal. So we're going to look into that. We actually talked about that earlier today about what's going to happen with Curve Street and how we're going to deal with that because that's important. You know, we have to, you have a park, you got to have a place for people to go, plus the church. All that parking would be just added to the church, which you don't have enough of. Um, I parked on Curve Street two weeks ago when I went, so. Um, those are great concerns, especially public safety-wise. Huge, huge concern for me. Um, we just have a ton of traffic. So we're going to put a lot of effort into that. Same thing with the security, with the lighting. You know, best thing you can do, it's in the most populated part of Pembroke as far as people going back and forth. That helps. You know, that helps with security as long as it's lit up. Do we have any cameras or anything? So that, that'll be part of the discussion. But then you have to have people to watch the cameras. No, right? I, I mean, so, I know. I'm just saying. You know. I, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, and, that's, and that technology is really good now with the ring doorbell cameras and everything mm -hmm. else that people have. The technology gets better. That's to our advantage to be able to kind of keep an eye on things. Uh, but the physical structure... You know, where are people going to park that's going to be safe? And how do we regulate the traffic so that, that pedestrians are okay? Um, it's, it's a nightmare. Right now it's a nightmare. Um, this week we have old home fairs day with the kids yep. going back and forth. I mean, oh, that's... Yeah. So we're going to try and make sure we have an officer out there. You don't have that for your services or your meetings or everything else. But, uh, you know, we're yeah, looking yeah. into that. So that, that's, to me, the major part of concern with this. If we're going to make any improvements, we're going to take public safety and... and the convenience of parking, the safe convenience of parking, is going to be, uh, you know, at the top of the list for me. Thank you. So you're still in a wheelchair going across that crosswalk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Do we have any more questions? Hey. What do you need for the Tuesday walkthrough? From oh, just other people helping. No. Every year, Scott Globin does it, and it, it used to be accompanied by two selectmen. But oh, oh, that's that walk through. Yeah. That, oh, 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 okay. That, walk that walk through. And you're going to be part of it. Yes. yes. Welcome to the walk through. See? Okay. So he's going to get. I thought hand you were setting up eyes a different on what, how it's set up and where okay. it's set up to make yeah. this work. It's going to be great. You need to decide if you're having your fried dough. You know. It actually, sounds really. He only good buys right baked products. Yeah. Bring your lovely wine. Is there a price that would be too high that would make this not doable? Um, you know, I've, I've been working with Patriot Global Enterprises, uh, Mr. Wayne Brown. He's doing the GAR Hall project, and he gave me a rough estimate on the on the entire project. And we don't think that it's going to be. I mean, we're like I said, we're just doing walkways, um, grading, and grading, and irrigation in a well. It, it can't exceed more than a hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah, it has to happen because the has to happen. No matter what, the grant wasn't that for two hundred thousand or something that you got anyway. So we're going to do a municipal improvements grant application this year for town landing. Next year, if we don't have any funding for this project, next year we're going to do another proposal um, for through the Massachusetts Office and Disability 
um, and try to get some ADA funding to make the ADA improvements, yes. When does this start? When does this project start? Yeah. As soon as we can 